Hello everyone, welcome back to the last lecture uh, in this unit. Um, lesson eight, factoring special polynomials part two. So last time we did two special cases. This time we're gonna do uh, one other case. Um, it is called the difference of squares as you can see on your screen below me, uh, as well as um, on your uh, documents that you should have. Um, so we're going to imagine a polynomial x squared minus nine. Uh, this is what's called a, a difference of squares because both of these terms are perfect squares. We could go x times x to get x squared and to get nine would be three times three. Um, now you're probably noticing, hey, like where's that middle term? Where's the x term in the middle that should be in here? And we can imagine that it's there, but in this case, we're going to imagine that it's zero. So x squared plus 0x minus 9 is what we're going to be uh, working with. Um, essentially, in order to factor this, what we're looking for is two numbers that have a product of minus 9 and a sum of 0. The only way that they can have a sum of 0 is if they are the same number but opposite sign. So, <laughs> can't see that sign. There we go. They're the same number, but they're the opposite sign. So that means like three times three gets us nine. So when we're writing it in our binomials, one would be positive and one would be negative. So if we have x squared minus nine, because they're both perfect squares, we can say x, x, three, three, and to make them add up to zero uh, for our middle term, one of them has to be negative, and the other one has to be positive. So this would be our answer to factoring x squared minus nine. It is a matter of just recognizing that this is what you need to do for this particular type. Uh, as there's lots of different kinds, you need to kind of go through, okay, this is this type, this is this type. You don't need to know their names, but you need to know what steps you need to take when you see them. Let's do a couple more problems here. We have x squared minus four. So let's do it. Uh, the first term is a perfect square, and the second term is a perfect square. Uh, there always is a negative sign in the difference of squares. So that means that one of them can be positive and one of them can be negative and they need to add to zero. Well, that would be x and x to make x squared. Two times two gets us four. I can make this one positive and this one negative. So when there's two terms like this, it's actually quite straightforward. Let's do the next one. y squared minus 25. We can write our brackets. We know that y's would go in the front. And we know that to make 25, five times five would work. And to make it zero in the middle, one of them would be positive and the other one would be negative. Um, easy as that. Let's see. Can we continue here? Yes, let's go on to the next one. We have 36 minus 16 n squared. So there's a couple of things that we can do with this. The first one I see is that the greatest common factor is not one. The greatest common factor between these is actually four. Um, if I take um, four and divide it into 36, I would get nine, and then I would also get four n squared over here. So I can now factor this. I see this is a difference of, uh, difference of squares. I would have four three in the first part, and the negative two n and positive two n as our second portion. Uh, we can always, uh, whenever there's a perfect, perfect squares, we can break it up into a positive and negative version. And let's do c to the power of four minus 16 d to the power of four. I can go to make c to the power of four by going c squared times c squared, and same thing with d. And I can make 16 by multiplying four times four. So this looks like a difference of squares. c squared uh, here, c squared here, 
d squared here, d squared here. We would have four for each of these. And then we can make one of them positive and one of them negative. And in this one, I'm not actually done because I have this portion here that is a perfect square, a difference of squares as well. So I can break this up, c and 2d would work. So we would have c squared plus 4d squared for this one. And then we could break the second part up into two parts, c, c, d, d. We could have two to make four, and then one of them is positive and one of them is negative. And then that is as far as we can go. Definitely be prepared for something like that. That's a common problem, especially on our assessments. See, we've got a couple more. Ah, you guys got some try it on your own. So try them on your own uh, and come back, uh, unpause the video when you're done and we can see if we got them all right together. Okay, let's do this. We have G squared minus 49. Both of these uh, can be square rooted, no problem. Uh, we would have G and g, 7 and 7 to add up to 0. One's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, and that's as far as we can go with those ones. Okay, let's see. We could do 64 a to the power of 4 minus 9 b squared. Um, greatest common factor in here is one. Uh, it might seem like you might be able to take something out, but I do believe it is one. So that means that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. This is a difference of squares problem with a zero factor in the middle. So we would have eight times eight to make 64. And then we would have a squared and a squared. And then to make nine b squared, we'd have b here and a b here a three and a three, and then one of them is positive and one of them is negative. And that's as far as you can go. Uh, you can't uh, break any one of them down any farther. Um, and none of them is another perfect square. This would be the answer that we're looking for. Okay. Um, so uh, when we're expanding these, uh, it's a very common mistake to just square both the terms. So if you've got x plus two squared, this is not, it does not equal, that's what that means, uh, x squared plus four. That is not correct at all. We need to actually write it out. Uh, it is the same thing when there's a negative in the middle. We actually need to write the whole thing out to find out what it is. So I'll show you the correct method. I've shown it to you before. But just so that we are all aware how to do this, x squared, x times two squared, we need to write that out twice. So we would have x plus two, x plus two. We would then foil it. x squared, x times two is two x, two times x is two x, two times two is four. Combine like terms, x squared plus four x plus four. You can see that is completely different this is the correct one and this one is absolutely not. Completely different answers. There's a four X in the middle. Um, we also need to do that for the X minus two squared. We cannot just square them. So we've got X minus two all squared. That is the same as writing it out as two binomials, which you need to FOIL. That's x squared, x times minus two is minus two x, two times x, that's minus two x, and that would be plus four. Combining the like terms in the middle, we get minus four x. So again, we have a term here that we wouldn't have had if we just squared both of those terms. Um, I hope you're able to get a lot out of this, especially this unit. I know it's a lot of lessons, um, but it's very, very important uh, as you move through math and science to be able to um, work with variables and factors and things like that. Uh, if you have any questions, post it in the comments, uh, send me an email, or I might see you uh, at school. So have a good one.